Coming up this week on the Double T Insider, senior China Brown has been lighting up the scoreboard during Big 12 conference play. We catch up with the Dallas native and find out what's working so well for her in 2013. They used to wear the red and black on a daily basis, but now some wear the colors of Major League Baseball teams. It was the fourth annual alumni baseball game last weekend, and we caught up with the former Red Raiders sluggers and aces. And it's another Texas Tech Trivia Question of the Week on the clock and much more. Sit back and buckle up. This is the Double T Insider, and it starts now. Let's go. The Double T Insider is brought to you by the College of Media and Communication and is entirely produced by students of the college. Here's your Texas Tech trivia question of the week. Kennedy Kithika, the 2012 Cross Country National Champion, has broken yet another individual record in track and field that has never been touched by another Red Raider. What was it? A. Overall time in men's distance medley relay. B. Running mile in under four minutes. C, break the record in the 55 meter hurdles, or D, outrun the golf cart Coach Murray is driving. The answer to this question is coming up later in the Double T Insider. More of the Double T Insider after the break. Welcome into a brand new edition of the Double T Insider, everyone. I'm Joshua Cook, joined by Erica Taylor as we bring you another week of inside access into Texas Tech Athletics. The Lady Raiders are off to a hot start in conference play this season, best start in eight seasons for Texas Tech, but recent success can be attributed to the hot play of China Brown. That's right, she's been lighting up the scoreboards in the Big 12, and let's see how this Lady Raider is helping her team get the job done. Crosses over to the free throw line, leaves it for Brown, left wing three, it's good! Downtown, China Brown! Now Brown will dribble up to the right elbow, her patented jump shot from there is good, and she's got 20 and 10 points and boards. Here's Smalls getting a screen up high, dribbling into the lane, kicks it out to the right wing, Brown for three, rattles it in! Downtown, China Brown has given Texas Tech a 12 point lead with a minute 20 left, and that might do it. It has been a long journey for China China Brown and her Lady Raider career. From overcoming an injury during her freshman campaign to being named the Big 12 Sixth Man of the Year at the end of her sophomore season to now starting every game except three so far in her senior season. The Dallas native's biggest impact has been felt since the start of conference play averaging 15.4 points per game entering the weekend. Coming out being aggressive, you know, wanting the basketball in her hands, her teammates doing a great job of finding her. It's just whatever I need to do to help my team win. You know, she's been doing that for us and um, just excited for her happy for. She's worked so hard. Back on January 5th, after scoring 15 points against Oklahoma State and 19 against Iowa State, Brown struggled against Kansas State, only scoring 5 points. But since that game on January 9th, the Dallas native has not scored under 10 points in any game since entering this weekend. Like I said, I don't pay attention to you know the score or how many points I score. just want to win and I wouldn't have got those points without my teammates you know, getting me the ball or me coming off the screen hard or just you know rebound, offensive rebounds and going back up. So. In three of her last five games, Brown has eclipsed the 20-point mark, scoring 20 against Texas and Kansas in back-to-back -back games to surpassing all kinds of career highs against TCU. The senior registered 23 points, 12 rebounds, and five three-pointers made, all new career highs, and the double-to-double -double marked the first of her Lady Raider career. It's just it's great to see your outside perimeters that work so hard in the gym, on and off like practice, on and off the court, just going in and shooting every day and for it to finally just they're hitting and everything's working in the play. It just feels great to see them happy. Against top-ranked Baylor, Brown continued to light at the scoreboard, scoring 10 points, marking her ninth game out of the last 10 where she reached double figures. Reporting for the Double T Insider, I'm Lindsey Bubb. It was a blast to the past as former Red Raiders returned here to Rip Griffin Park to play in Texas Tech's fourth annual alumni game.
The fourth annual alumni game saw some familiar faces return to Rip Griffin Park to take on the current Red Raider team. Leading the alumni team were legends Cal Segrist and Larry Hayes, who have combined for a total of 36 years coaching the Red Raiders and are the only two coaches to have their jerseys retired at Tech. The alumni team included former Red Raiders dating back as early as Gary Ashby of 1977 to Mike Humphreys of 88, and four players from the 2012 team. Reed Redmond and A.J. Ramos enjoyed the opportunity to return home to Lubbock. It's definitely different, uh, you know. Growing up, you know, growing up, coming to these games and uh, always wanting to be on, you know, one of the two. And I've had the opportunity to be on both. It's definitely different, but it's always good to come back to Lubbock and come back to Tech. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm from here, so um, you know, my family gets to see me. Um, all, the, all the people that watched me pitch in high school, even growing up, uh, you know, they get to come out and watch, and it's it's it's, it's home for me. So I get to perform in front of my my family and my friends, and it's, it's home. With the return of the alumni comes a lot of catching up with each other in the dugout. Anytime this group of guys gets together, it's fun. There's always something, uh, some stories told that, that are really funny. And uh, just everybody together, this group of guys, it's just it's a good atmosphere. Over in our dugout, it's pretty loose, you know, everybody's cracking jokes, doing all that. And I'm sure there's some of that going on in the actual team's dugout, but it's a lot looser and, you know, guys are just trying to have fun and a lot of stories being told. So what did new head coach Tim Tadlock think of the competition? It was really neat to watch the alumni compete and play and uh, some pretty good players over there. Uh, obviously really good players I should say and uh, they were tough to beat today and if you gave them a month's time they'd be even tougher to beat. Although they defeated the alumni team to a final score of 5-4, to four, this year's current Red Raider squad still has room for improvement before the season begins. Right now, the current Texas Tech team, I mean, it's about rhythm and timing and getting at bats and getting on the mound, finding some timing, and uh, you saw some guys that need to find some and some, you know, some that don't, but uh, it's just good to get out on the field. They're really young. They, they look really young, um, but they, they, you can see that there's some talent there. Um, I think talent's going to set them in the right direction. Uh, they just. You know, need to, obviously you need to go over some, some little stuff, but um, you know that's that's the way it goes. Um, I think you know for the next couple of years they're going to be they're going to be pretty good. They're going to grow into their uh, into his co coaching strategy, and uh, they're going to they're going to fit in perfect. For the Double T Insider, I'm Jason Anboy. Coming up next on the Double T Insider, we try to not sweat the technique as Jacorian Duffield shows us the ins and outs of a successful high jump. And we also tell you the story of former Red Raider and Olympian Shane Brathwaite. But first, we take away an answer to the Texas Tech Trivia Question of the Week. Here is another look at the Texas Tech Trivia Question of the Week. Earlier we asked, Kennedy Kithika, the 2012 Cross Country National Champion, has broken yet another individual record in track and field that has never been touched by another Red Raider. What was it? Your options were A, overall time in men's distance medley relay, B, running mile in under four minutes, C, break the record in the 55-meter hurdles, or D, outrun the golf cart Coach Murray is driving. The option that is not the correct answer is C, break the record in the 55-meter hurdles. Kennedy Kithika does not compete in the 55-meter hurdles. The answer to the Texas Tech Trivia Question of the Week will be coming up later in the show. The Double T Insider rolls on after the break. Texas Tech is on the rise. Now a national research university, a growing campus steeped in tradition. Seven straight semesters of record enrollment. Wind research that's unrivaled in the world. The best trained and educated students for today's jobs. And to all this, we have just one thing to say. With pride, guns up. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Last week, we told you the story of track and field athlete Jacorian Duffield and his early success this season. Now the sophomore high jumper takes part in our new segment, Don't Sweat the Technique, where he shows us exactly how to high jump. Don't sweat the technique. Don't sweat the technique. We are in 
inside the athletic training center for our new segment called Don't Sweat the Technique featuring Jacorian Duffield and he's going to show our very own Double T Insider how to high jump step by step. He's going to break it down for us. All right, we're going to start off with the first step right here. Okay, well first, uh, what leg do you jump off of? Okay, so we're going to go to the right side over here. To start off, you want to get a mark probably roughly 13 feet wide. For you, probably around 50, 50 feet. And um, you said you jump off your left, right? So you're going to have your left foot forward. And your first three steps, you're going to rock back, usually rock back into it, and then you're gonna start your approach. Now your first three steps should be fairly aggressive, not like a sprinter, but just to give you enough momentum to uh, initiate your curve with some speed to go into the bar. And then after that, we're gonna, your, uh, after your third step, you're gonna set up your curve on your outside foot, which will be your right foot. And then you're gonna use your momentum from the first three steps all the way into your curve. And you're gonna, your goal is in the curve is to stay away from the bar and bring as much speed as you can to the bar. And then with your last three steps, you're gonna put them down really aggressively to take off in an angle that you can bring the most speed and most momentum, and then let physics take you over the bar. So on your last step to your uh, approach, you're gonna set your penultimate, and then you're gonna take off and plant. You're gonna stay vertical. Usually your hands wanna be straight up, not leaning towards the bar, because then you're gonna lean and hit the bar. So you try to stay up, and drive your knee up for a half a second. And your momentum is gonna take you towards the bar and it's gonna slowly make you rotate with your back to the bar. You're gonna drop your head, which is gonna drop your shoulders, which is gonna cause the arc or the flop like everyone talks about. And then once you feel your hips are at the top of the bar or past the bar, you're gonna tuck your head, which is gonna cause your feet to rotate over the bar. So to, before you start jumping in competition, you wanna do a warm up and for our warm-up is our U, our standard U approach. It's where I'll demonstrate, but I'll speak for it before. We're gonna push out aggressively like you're jumping, bring in more speed, and then you're not gonna jump. You're gonna work on staying away from the bar in your last three steps, and then just continue the J, all, or I mean the U, all the way on the other side. So I'll demonstrate, then I'll let you do it. You wanna go push out hard. Stay away, stay away, and continue it all the way to the other side. So for you, you would go from your right to the left side. That was pretty good, that was pretty good. But Next time, you'll try to extend it all the way out, but that was still strong. So now, we would go to the jumping. After a few of those, we'd start jumping. Take over right there, probably like here. No, 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 no cutting out, just straight. You wanna put your foot, your outside foot will start your curve. Then you wanna bring your left foot basically straight with your right foot and then it'll cause you to not just dart at the bar, but make a curve towards the bar. I want to say that was higher than I jumped the first time I jumped. Actually, in middle school, I wasn't even a good high jumper, so that was actually pretty good as a first time high jumper. Thank you. All right, we just saw Jason clear a five foot bar. Tell me, Jason, how does it feel? I thought it felt great. What's your goal for next time? Seven feet. Seven feet. All right, that was Don't Sweat the Technique featuring Jacorian Duffield along with Jason. Making it to the Olympic Games last summer is an accomplishment in itself, and that's exactly what Shane Brathwaite did. We caught up with the former Red Raider track star this past week. 
2012 was a great year in track and field for Texas Tech athletes. Both indoor and outdoor seasons tallied up a total of 22 All-American honors. And to cap off the season, six Tech athletes had the opportunity in representing their country for the 2012 Summer Olympics in London. Hailing from Bridgetown, Barbados, Shane Brathwaite was one of six Tech athletes in the Summer Olympics. He was also one of six representing his hometown. It was a great feeling, you know, just to go there and do my best and, you know, try to represent my country. You know, it was an amazing feeling. I had a really good senior year and um, I was consistent running 13-4, 13-3. So, you know, it was a really good feeling. Tech is considered to some as Hurdle U for having rich tradition and successful athletes in the event. And Shane Brathwaite is no exception. The Central Arizona transfer claimed All-American honors in the 110 hurdles during his junior and senior year at Tech. Now as a professional, Brathwaite is back training under assistant coach Dion Miller. It just shows the uh, testament of uh, what, what we do here at Texas Tech when it comes to the hurdles. For him to cho choose me as his professional coach and continue to coach him, you know, you know, I'm very lucky to have such a, a great young man. You know, he's a student assistant right now seeking his, uh, his degree. And so uh, we're looking for some great things for Shane. You know, it, it's great to keep a tradition going. You know, I'm just happy to be a part of it, you know. You know, I wish I had another year, to, you know, to put some crazy times out there for Texas Tech, but, you know, I'm happy. The road to Rio for the 2016 Summer Olympics is still a long ways to travel, but Brathwaite is looking to take each meet one step at a time. Right now, you know, my main goal is, you know, to become professional and, you know, run fast on the professional um, circuit. And then as the years go by, you know, keep working towards the Olympics. For the Double T Insider, I'm Erica Taylor. On the other side of the break, we'll see if a Lady Raider can answer 10 questions under 60 seconds. But first, here's the answer to the Texas Tech trivia question. Here's the answer to the Texas Tech trivia question of the week. Earlier we asked, Kennedy Kithika, the 2012 Cross Country National Champion, has broken yet another individual record in track and field that has never been touched by another Red Raider. What was it? The answer is B run a mile in under four minutes. At the Mondo Challenge, Kennedy Kithika ran the mile in three minutes, 59.53 seconds, marking the fastest time by any Red Raider in school history. Don't go anywhere, the Double T Insiders back after the break where we will preview the upcoming games for the week for Texas Tech Athletics. Texas Tech is on the rise. Now a national research university, a growing campus steeped in tradition. Seven straight semesters of record enrollment. Wind research that's unrivaled in the world. The best trained and educated students for today's jobs. And to all this, we have just one thing to say. With pride, guns up. Double T Insider here, and we are on the clock with Candace Jackson, a game where I give Candace 10 different scenarios, and she has to answer them to the best of her ability, all in 60 seconds. All right, Candace, are you ready? Yes. I'm all right, ready. 60 seconds on the clock, please. All right. A celebrity I would love to have dinner with is? LeBron James. If I could teleport back into time, I would travel to? Uh, Back when I was a little baby. <laughs> if I was stranded on a deserted island, the three things I must have are? His food, my phone, and computer. The first thing on my mind on a Monday morning is? Oh, school. My teammates say I am? Very short. <laughs> Between my cell phone, computer, and TV, I would go a whole month without? TV. I would donate a million dollars to? Uh, um, a charity to the kids in Africa. I would give my last dollar to? My mama. My favorite class at Texas Tech is? Psychology. My favorite cartoon character as a kid was? Minnie Mouse. What's the time, what's the time? 15 seconds left, all right, good. <laughs> so you beat the clock, congratulations, and thanks for playing. I'm Erica Taylor, and we were on the clock with Candace Jackson. With the show winding down, here's a preview of what's coming up this week in Tech Athletics. On Tuesday, Texas Tech men's basketball will face Kansas State inside the United Spirit Arena. The Wildcats are led by senior guard Rodney McGruder, averaging nearly 15 points a game. The Red Raiders are carried by junior forward Jay Crockett, averaging almost 13 points a game. Tip-off time is set for 7 p.m. Wednesday, the Lady Raiders will rematch new Big 12 opponent West Virginia inside the USA. Last meeting, Texas Tech came back in overtime 
same fashion, beating the Mountaineers 77-73 to on West Virginia's home court. Christine Hyde led the Lady Raiders with 19 points in the overtime win. Wednesday's tip-off is set for 7 p.m. Also on Wednesday, men's golf swings into action for the spring season. The Red Raiders will be in Kona, Hawaii to compete in the two-day Mary Airy Invitational. Competition will continue through Thursday and is scheduled to last all day. This weekend, Red Raiders softball opens up the 2013 season. Texas Tech opens their 2013 schedule on the road in Las Vegas, Nevada to compete in the Sport Co. Kickoff Classic. Friday, Texas Tech will face UCF at 11 a.m., followed by a 1.15 p.m. game against DePaul. Then on Saturday, the Red Raiders will play against Louisville at 5.45 p.m., then square off against UNLV at 10.15 p.m. Sunday, Texas Tech will end their weekend against Minnesota at 1.15 p.m. Texas Tech track and field will compete in Fayetteville, Arkansas Friday and Saturday in the Tyson Invitational. Events are scheduled to last all day. Men's tennis will compete in the final ITA kickoff weekend with a doubleheader Saturday. The Red Raiders will face Wichita State at 10 a.m. followed by a 3 p.m. match against Lamar. That's a wrap for this week's show. Thanks for tuning in into the Double T Insider. Also be sure to go like our Facebook page, search for Double T Insider, also on Twitter at Double T Insider, and never miss another episode. For Joshua Cook, I'm Erica Taylor. Have a great week, everyone.